Hello, I'm just about to do some more test flying with this uh, flying wing test bed thingy. I haven't really changed anything regarding the mixes, that's all the same. All I've done is I've added this GPS which is running at 10 hertz, and I've also added an open log SD card logging module over there and that's taking output from the main board and it's going to be logging some of the GPS values that we get from the nav PVT message and it's also going to be logging some of the values from those nodes that make up the program that this is all running on but running out of daylight here so just gonna to have to get on with it I think Whoa. Okay, I had a bit of a problem yesterday. The uh, SD card thing wasn't recording the way it was supposed to be and it was getting kind of dark and it wasn't very good video to look at anyway. So I did some debugging and let's try it again on a nice sunny morning. It's got wet now. Oh, look, that twitching's no good. That's totally my fault. I didn't throw it properly. And I didn't get my hands on the uh, on the stick quick enough. Should I give it a try? GPS is going still. That thing's still going. So that's the <laughs> that's the main thing. I don't like this twitch that I'm seeing in the servos though. Problem is, if it resets in the air, it could be really screwed. Oh yeah, see that. Oh, look at that! Okay, let's try again. I think it's all dried out now. And we've got a little bit of wind coming from this way, which is hopefully going to help. I think I just got a little bit complacent before with that launch. Alright, let's turn back this way. Whoops. A little bit of breeze now. Okay, so let's try auto level. It's hands off. And I'll just let it run like that for a bit. Come over here. Looks pretty good. Um, okay, let's turn to the... Oh, I think it's pitching up. Turn to the left. Oops, and then hands off here. Okay, so it doesn't level up. But the point of this test is I want to see what the values are inside the program at this point. What it thinks it's doing. Yeah, it's pitching up and down a little bit more than it was before. I'm going to have to turn to the right here and come back because getting a little bit far away. <laughs> Okay, that's hands off again. Well, hopefully, if I've, um, okay, turning to the left, if I've set up the um, on screen display thing that I'm thinking to do, I shouldn't have to be telling you anymore what I'm doing with my inputs because that's going to be logged. And it will be, hopefully, appearing before you right now in the video. Uh, looks a bit fluttery. Hands off. Let's do a little bit of left rudder. A little bit of right rudder there. <laughs> okay, a little bit of right rudder and a bit of a turn, see if we can turn quickly. Uh, didn't make much difference. Let's 
fluttering. The flutter seems to be confined to specific speeds. Um, there were some people in the comments in the last video saying that it was fluttering at faster speeds, but that's not, not necessarily the case. Oh, right into the sun. So, let's see what happens when I go fast. Full throttle here. Okay, it flutters at that almost full speed, but then when it picks up to the actual full speed, it seems to stop fluttering. Do a little glide, hands off. Hands off everything. Ooh, oh, it's turning around. <laughs> Not supposed to be doing that. Motor back on. All right, well, I've probably got enough data to um, take it back and have a look at. I don't want to get these files too large because uh, I've done a little bit of processing of these vi video or PNG files for the on-screen display and it takes a hell of a long time, at least with the way that I'm doing it at the moment. So I'll probably just uh, finish up here soon. Let's try a little bit of gyro-only flying. Oh, it's pitching up. Looks like we've got a decent bit of wind there. It's moving very slowly. Oh, I'll turn the drag rudders off here too because there you go, drag rod is off. Because um, in my flight last night I was trying that and just like some people commented on the last video, the drag rudder actually not that important. Seems like the um, the fact that the leading edge of this wing is quite bulky and chunky, it's like a wall almost. It's not very sleek or aerodynamic. And that combined with the sweep of the wing seems to be enough to keep it stable in your. Or is it stable in your? I can't. Let me turn the drag rudder back on here. I feel like it might be helping a tiny bit. Uh oh, can't see it. Okay. Alright, wind's picking up now and. I started this flight with only a half charged battery so I'll just fly around for another minute or so and then we better stop I think. But it's actually it's quite comfortable with just the gyro only. Let's turn the auto level back on there. Interesting it didn't change that time. This hands off now. Uh oh, going behind the tree, but that should be okay. Alright, let's take a lift. Go downwind. And I'll switch back into gyro only. And I'm going to do a real short landing here with my air brakes coming on about now. I tried this yesterday and you can do it really short. Oh, this is going to be too short probably. No? No? Is it okay? It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it almost seems like you can use the air brakes to, to come down very vertically, but when you get close to the ground you kind of have to turn them off so that you can still swoop up like that instead of just sort of thumping into the ground so quickly. Anyway, we're all wet again and it's freaking out. That is not good but it's interesting that uh, it doesn't seem to completely kill the board, so I'm happy about that, but in any case, I'm going to be <laughs> disconnecting the power as soon as I can. So, um, yeah, I guess this is the end of the video, because you've already seen all the data, hopefully, 
on the OSD as I was flying. So, well, hang on a minute. Let me explain some of what we were seeing there. You've probably figured most of it out already, but there are a couple of numbers that might not have made sense if you were watching closely. So in the top left, we have the pitch and roll in degrees and gyro X and Y in degrees per second. I forgot to lock the Z axis, unfortunately. And then this thing here is just sort of a graphical depiction of that. And with the pitch, the nose of the plane would be on the right hand side, I think it was. Then the next bunch of values are pretty much coming straight from the GPS. Um, they started off in gray text and then they became green when the number of satellites increased to five. Uh, and it just by coincidence, that was the exact same moment that I threw the plane. So it might have looked like something was related to being thrown there, but no, it was nothing to do with the launch. It was just coincidence. It was exactly the same time. The altitude is in meters above sea level or meters above ellipsoid, maybe. I'm not sure. So it's not meters above the launch point. Uh, it started off at about 100. So what we're seeing here, this particular frame that I've snapshotted here, we're only about 33 meters above the launch point. Uh, distance from home is taken from, unfortunately, the value that I put in the program for the day before, which is the yellow marker there, which is, um, that's where I was launching from the day before when I was flying this, but I forgot to change it. So it starts at about 100 meters when it should be starting at zero. So that's why the numbers look a little bit off. And then this next value here near home, this is just a, a Boolean value. Uh, and it's just checking if the distance is more than or less than 200 meters. If it's less than 200 meters, then it will become yes. Otherwise it's no, that's all. Then we have three kind of mode switches. This is just showing you what my switches are doing on the transmitter. There's also a throttle cut switch, which I forgot to log here, but it was on the whole time anyway, so it wouldn't have been much to look at there. And I changed the colors of these a little bit too as the modes were changing. Down below we have the RC input, so the red knobby things there. This is my stick inputs so that I was actually moving my fingers. That's mode two, of course. And then over here we have what the plane or uh, what the program was sending to the mixer. So these purple ones, you'll see they were jiggling around a little bit. At least the pitch and roll was jiggling around quite a bit as it responded to the, the gyro sensors and stuff. Uh, and then on the far right, we have servos. Now, I hope you figured out what this is. Uh, this is looking from the back of the plane what the control surfaces would look like. So they're going up and down. And when they go above level, they're green. When they go below level, they're red. And when we put the air brakes on at the end there, um, it's a little bit exaggerated. So I don't think the control surfaces were actually going up quite that much. But just to let you see visually what the, the plane is doing as it flies, it's quite useful, I think. Now, please don't ask me for any source code or anything for this OSD thing. It was very much a one-off thing that I wrote a special program for to pull the data out of the binary file and make a whole bunch of PNG files. There's actually 22,000 PNG files for each one of these little rectangular sections here. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 110,000 PNG files that all needed to be um, made into each their own video and then overlaid onto this one. But... I mean, the fact that I could manage to do that in like a half a day or yeah, probably half a day of programming means that in the future, this could be made in something, into something that's more user friendly and some sort of an OSD thing could be done like this, perhaps. Anyway, that's uh, quite a ways in the future, I think. But for now, thanks for watching. See you next time.